G'day guys, welcome to the show. This week, I'm gonna show you how to put a background behind your character, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different than you might expect because we're gonna make some mistakes. So we've jumped into Photoshop and we're drawing our character. We're paying a lot of attention to the proportions, the design language, all of these shapes. We want our character to look as cool as possible. In fact, we're so focused on this design that we've actually made our first mistake without even realizing it. We've drawn a flat character. The feet and the sword, they all meet at the same point, our ground plane. But it's not really a plane. The character isn't standing in 3D space. It's just a design mannequin. But if we want to insert our character into an environment, it's not really going to look right because the environment is going to be existing in a place which has perspective. And if our character isn't adhering to exactly the same perspective, it's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel light. It's not going to feel like it exists within the same world. Now, this is a piece that I painted a couple of years ago, and although it does have its problems, it serves as a good example for this idea of the character's perspective needing to match the perspective of the environment in which you place them. And although this is going to be a bit of an extreme example, let's see what happens when we put our knight that we just drew into this scene's perspective. You see, now obviously it doesn't work at all. It's completely broken. They don't match. But even though this is an extreme example, this same effect is happening at some level to your image if you have not planned ahead. In fact, I would argue that the entire premise of this video is flawed. You shouldn't be thinking about how do I paint a background for my character? It's just a nonsensical question. The real question is how do I paint my character within an environment? And there's a big difference. Anyway, your character isn't broken. If you've drawn a nice flat perspective like this, straight on, good design, you're happy with it, you can put a background behind your character and make it look great. So, I'm going to bring up another image here. Boink! And this is another old image of mine, and I just painted out the character that I had standing in it. And this one has a pretty forgiving perspective situation. It's a pretty flat shot itself, so it should suit our knight pretty well. And I'm going to show you how I would go about matching my character to the scene so that it doesn't feel out of place. Because look what happens when I drop the knight into the scene now. It just doesn't look like part of the scene. If you look at the shoulders and the head, you could almost believe that that's intended to be in this scene. But as soon as you get down to the feet and the sword, it just kind of looks like the character's floating in space. And don't even get started on the colors. The colors do not match at all. In fact, that's our second mistake. We tried to color in the character without taking into consideration the environment in which they were going to be. And so our colors are wrong. But there's some things that we can do to fix that. And those things need to be explained quickly with another little video. Now I want you to imagine that this little dwarf is your character. And look what happens when I change the lighting in the environment. Pay attention to the colors of the environment and the colors of the character because they both change dramatically as the lighting changes. But it's not just a matter of the environment lighting. Objects are visible to us because they are reflecting light back into our eyes. So they are, in essence, light sources. So look what happens when we change the color of the ground plane. Pay attention to the shadow areas because that's where most of this bounce light is going to end up. And the reason for this is quite simple. When a bright white light shines on an object, it's going to illuminate that object's local color. But anywhere that's occluded from that direct light, so in the shadows, is not going to be receiving that direct light. What happens is the light that misses that object bounces around the environment, then hits the shadow side of the object, and then bounces back into our eyes. So it actually gives it a color. So the first thing we need to do to begin to correct these colors 
is identify what kind of colors are going to be bouncing around in this scene. And for this particular scene, we have a lot of green. So all I'm going to do is select one of the dominant green colors here, just create a new layer at the top of my character and wash the entire thing with that green. And then I'm going to go to the layer modes drop down on that layer and select soft light. And soft light's just going to give it a bit of that color. It's going to mix the, the color of the environment with all of the colors that already exist within my character. So what I did before by coloring in the character with the local color is not wasted. And you can already see how much better this looks already with that one thing. But we're not done. There's still quite a bit of work we need to do to make this character feel like it's part of this scene. Because the bounced and reflected light within the scene is only one part of the picture. There's also a big sky up above and it's a huge light source that is shining down on everything. So the next step is to go into that green layer we just added and begin to remove it from wherever the object is facing up. So I'm going to go onto the top of the gloves here, on the top of all of the shoulder pads and the helmet, any sort of surface that looks like it might be facing the sky, I'm going to remove that green color. And in just a moment when I'm done with that, I'm going to make another layer on top of the night that is exactly the same as the green layer, except that it's the color of the sky. Then I'll do the same thing I did with the green, but I'll go in and I'll remove it from all of the surfaces that are facing down. So basically, in summary, we've added a green reflected light that comes in from the sides and the ground. And then we've added a blue reflected light which comes in from the top. These are our basic key environment lights. These are the things that are going to make this character feel like it's part of the scene. But there's still more things that we can do to make it feel even more harmonious with its environment. I'm going to make one last layer here on top of the night and I'm just going to wash the bottom half of the night with a dark green sort of color on a multiply layer. And that's just going to kind of simulate the idea of the bottom half of the character receiving less light than the top of the character. It's just going to make them feel a little bit more grounded in the scene, especially considering we've got those perspective issues with the feet. We want to kind of darken that down. But guess what? We've made another mistake. In fact, we made that mistake quite a while ago, and I didn't mention it. Our character's getting lost. I mean, sure, the colors are looking a lot better, the character feels a lot more grounded in the environment, but it just seems to be standing in front of this tree, and the tree has a whole bunch of visual noise in it. And if you kind of blur your eyes or step back a little bit and look at the picture as a very small image, you immediately lose the silhouette of the character. And that is bad because if you are going to put a background behind a character, that background is a background and the character is the star of the show. Therefore, the background needs to support the star of the show as much as possible. And this environment is not doing that. So we need to find a new place for our knight to stand so that it can shine so it can stand out so it can be the star so why don't we put him here there's a nice break in the trees we can have him stand out against that but we're going to have to do a little bit of painting to get rid of the trees in the background and really give this knight a good place to rest within our composition but guess what we have made another mistake that's right i just made an entire video about how to make a background for your character and I didn't even paint a background. And that's because you need some upfront information before you even start, right? You need to get the idea of painting a background for something out of your head completely. That's not what you're doing. You have to design these things in parallel with one another. They're part of the same scene. You're just creating an image from scratch. You're not simply drawing a character. You're painting a scene. And that scene has a character in it. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to make a part two to this tutorial where I do paint a character and a background together and show you my method for developing those two things in harmony with one another. 
and how I choose my color palettes, how I build depth into the scene, and how I really try and show off my character in an interesting composition. So if you want to see that, uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, because that'll be coming out in a few weeks, I'd say. These tutorial videos are pretty labor intensive to make, so they just take a little bit longer. So I'll just have this chugging along in the background while I do some more uh, basic art videos where I just paint something nice and there's some music and discussion. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you think it's really helpful and useful, why not share it with a friend? And until next time, I'll see you later. Thank <music> you.